the way that dude comes out in the first second, like, uh, it was go from the get-go. At what point did you start being able to, like, breathe? And how were you sort of handling all that chaos, especially in the first round? Yeah, you know, uh, we knew he was going to be super explosive, especially in the first round. And, uh, you know, I, I could have done a better job weathering the storm, but I think it made it a little more exciting. You know, he, he's very dangerous. He's got a lot of knockouts. And, uh, you know, when he was on top and I was moving out, I was just making sure he didn't land anything clean um, or, or, you know, or catch me. So we knew he was going to come out and aggressive, but I've, I've weathered the storm before and uh, I was lucky to come back and, uh, you know, put the, put, the, put the pace back on him too. And, um, <laughs> excuse me, how comfortable were you going into that decision that you had it? Because, uh, you know, first round probably for him and then you really started turning the game there. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a close fight. I, uh, I haven't been in too many close decisions like that in a long time, so I didn't know, man. We've all obviously seen a lot of uh, bad judges' decisions, so I'm just happy, man. I, a lot of the media people think I won the fight. I thought I won the fight. I definitely won the third round. I really feel like I won the second, too. Um, I felt like I was closer to, to, to submitting him and beating him. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm happy with the win, and, uh, you know, we're going to go home with the, with the win. So, you know, I'm happy. And uh, last question for me. Spike's last win was against one of your teammates, correct? Yes, sir. So uh, how did it feel to get that one back and sort of avenge that loss for your partner? It was good, man. You know, Alon, Alon's a grown man. He didn't need me to get this win back for him. Um, but, you know, we were in some positions, and I was landing some elbows that were close to, like, you know, where he landed them on, on Alon. And I didn't feel bad at all because I knew what he did. So, you know, it was, it was, it was good, man. Uh, Spike's a tough guy, and, and he, was, he was talking a lot of smack going into this fight. He told people it was going to be a massacre. And, uh, you, know, you know, maybe he'll learn from that. And uh, I think we'll both become better from this fight. For sure, man. Uh, congratulations, and hope you get to rest following that crazy fight. Thanks, man. We'll go next to Jim Barcelone with Miami Herald. Your line is open. Congrats, Billy. Awesome fight with you two tonight. It's interesting that he had said that. He said it's going to be a massacre. He's coming out. When you're going into a fight, do you listen to a lot of that as far as when it comes time to preparation? Or is that just a lot of talk, too, and, and you, you, you take it into account, you don't take it into account? He really did do what he was wanting to do. He came out really fast, really aggressive, wanted to take you out early, and you weathered the storm. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, I, I think sometimes, I think he kind of showed his hand. I think he was uh, he was either a little overconfident, or I think he was saying things to, to kind of to motivate himself. You know, if you look at both of our, our resumes, I think I have a lot more, uh, you know, big wins. You know, I've beat a lot of really good guys. And, um, you know, it was kind of fun going back and forth. I was trolling him a little bit. Uh, you know, he wore his little mask, and I called him a clown. And uh, he was talking smack. And, you know, it's a fight. You know, we're gonna, I knew we were going to fight anyway, so why not? You know, I think uh, I'm just hoping the crowd – it sounds like everyone liked the fight. It, it was fun for me, man. It was, you know, it, it was really fun. And, uh, uh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, a lot of good reviews so far with that fight. And was it surprising, too, near that end of the first round when he just sort of got up – and start walking away, man. You just went right after him like a cobra. You just attacked, but yeah, yeah, you know, you know what happened? he came out super aggressive early, and um, you know, like I just told the media, it's dead quiet in there, and there was no bell. There wasn't even the ten second marker. I didn't hear the ten second marker. The second he got up, he turned away, and the ref said, "You got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting." So I kept fighting. You know, I'm not like, you know, I, I don't want to be looked at like a dirty fighter. But the ref said, "Keep fighting," and. We kept fighting, you know, so I don't, I don't know, man. Was, that was a really strange move. And, uh, you know, I'm glad the fight didn't end that way because I didn't want to win that way. But at the same time, man, I, I'm, I'm going to take that chance if you give it to me. And, Billy, what was it like being in this historic card, the UFC return to Las Vegas? And so many, with all the testing going on, with no crowd, like you said, and just everything that went with it, and being a part of this whole big event tonight. Man, it was amazing. You know, it, this was a dream come true to get to the UFC. Uh, I want to thank everyone in the UFC. They've done a great job all, all week. You know, they, it, it's new to us. It was new to them. And uh, everyone, I think, really did a really good job. Dana White's the man, man. You know, he put this together. They gave me a good opportunity on the main card. And uh, I did I did what I can, man. I tried to put on an exciting fight. You know, I, I grew up watching ESPN and Sports Center, So this is a dream come true, man. I'm just soaking it all in. But at the end of the day, I know I got to get better, man. I will get better. I promise that. And lastly, for me, how does this put Tampa on the map, Billy? <laughs> yeah, you know, we're out here now, man. A lot of people talk about South Florida, Gracie, Tampa South. We had a great gym. I got a bunch of young amateur fighters coming up. We've been doing our thing. You know, I'm the head coach of the amateur fight team, and I, I 
guarantee you I'm going to get some of these guys to the UFC. And, uh, you know, we're going to take it to the next level. Billy Corntello, you're going to keep hearing that name. So I hope all you media guys get used to saying it. And spelling it, too. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we'll take our final question from Rodney Edgar with Cage Side Press. Your line is open. Yeah, I'm getting used to it, Billy. I was there for your uh, your Contender Series fight at the uh, Apex. And, um, I've asked a lot of guys this tonight, guys and gals, a lot of uh, Contender Series alumni on this card tonight. I wonder what was it like to come back to the Apex and be on the UFC roster this time and actually uh, get to walk out with music? Yeah, yeah, it was fun, man. Uh, it's my old, these are my old stomping grounds. You know, I thought the fight was going to be in Jacksonville, and it would have been about a three-hour drive for me. But, uh, you know, when they said it was here and uh, out in the Apex, it was exciting, man. I love Las Vegas. Um, but like I said, I want my next fight to, to be a huge crowd. I want my whole family and my whole my whole fan base to get that Billy Q chant going, get the Billy Q headbands. And uh, I want to be on the main card again, man. I think I deserved it. Or I think I earned it. I'm hoping so. And, uh, you know, 2-0 and in the UFC now. I've won my last seven fights. And uh, we're just going to keep things rolling, baby. Yeah, I remember now. I remember your contender series fight. You had, you did. You had a huge crowd. Um, one of the, one of the bigger ones of the, of the season. Um, so yeah, we talked about how Spike came out out of the gate, just ball of fury. Um, it looked like there were quite a few shots to the back of your head, maybe even some twelve to six elbows. I know it's hard to tell when you're in there, especially when it first pops off. But um, what do you think? How's the back of your head feel? Do you, did you get? Yeah, oh, I got a huge bruise in the head. I, I have a huge bruise in the back of my head. And if you watch the Alon Cruz fight, that's how he finished it. So, um, you know, I uh, I felt like going into this fight, Spike was, you know, he was super friendly to me. And then he kept telling everyone it was going to be a massacre. So, you know, right away he started elbowing me in the back of the head. I'm like, I can't go out like this. So I was just going to keep fighting until the, the final bell. And there was a few times he was in my guard. I was elbowing him right at the top of the head. And I didn't feel bad about it at all. You know, my elbows all busted up. And, uh, you know, it was a dog fight, man. I, I live for these type of fights. And I'm so happy that, you know, everyone backstage was like high fiving me, and even people that like like security guards and stuff were like telling me it was a great fight. So I just I, I love this stuff, man. I, I really appreciate everyone, uh, you know, just supporting me, and uh, I love being here. Yeah, we we touched on it a little bit, but I have to ask. Um, <laughs> the end of the first round was like one of the craziest things I've ever seen happen. What the heck do you think? What do you think he was being cocky, or think he just didn't know what was going on? What was going through? Yeah, your I think head? he was being cocky. You know, I think. Uh, He's, he's done it in other fights where he turns his back and throws, like, big spinning back fists. We're getting ready for that. But if I hear one person tell me I'm a dirty fighter, I'm going to lose it because there was it was him doing a weird-ass thing. Like, I wasn't trying to be dirty. The ref, he stood up, and the ref goes, keep fighting, keep fighting. He had plenty of opportunity to, to stay in there. He could have stayed on top and, uh, you know, defend yourself at all times, man. I'm, you know, he shouldn't have done that. Maybe, you know, if, if he would have turned his back and landed a spinning back fist and knocked it out, knocked me out, you know, people, you know, wouldn't even have thought twice about it. So it's a fight, man. And and there was no crowd noise. So there's really no reason for him to do that. You know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this. I don't think there are very many people who are going to feel like you did anything dirty because uh, the consensus on social media is, is largely in your favor. People were very confused about what he did. And they, and they, I even saw Aljamain Sterling tweet. He was like, you know, the ref is wrong. The ref should have not even you know, told Spike because he kind of went over there and said, hey, you got to fight. Yeah. You know, he knows that, though. The ref shouldn't have to tell him. Does that make sense? When you're, when yeah, you're still shout, out to shout out to Aljamain, man. He works with, uh, you know, all those Long Island guys, Ray Longo, that whole crew. I've been able to cross-train with those guys. Really, really good group of guys. And, uh, yeah, yeah, spot on, man. Uh, Aljamain's the man. He understands the rules. It's defend yourself at all times. You'll never see me doing something like that. From bell to bell, I'm, I'm looking at my opponent. I'm not turning my back. Unless I'm throwing some spinning stuff, so you know I'm, you know I'm not. I don't feel bad about it, especially since his last fight, he landed some elbows to the back of the head. You know, all all is fair in this game, and uh, you know I got the win, so uh, it's on to the next one. Yeah, speaking of the Long Island boys, Matt Favola was the one who uh, turned me on to you in the first place when you fought here before. Um, did he come with you this time? Was he on your uh, in your corner? Yeah, yeah, Matt Matt Favola. Uh, for those who don't know, um, me and Matt Favola. Moved down to Tampa Bay in 2010, the same exact week. And this is in 2010, 
I was 0-1 as an amateur fighter, and he was 0-0. So uh, we became good friends right away. We lived together for a couple of years, um, and we've been grinding ever since. You know, we both got in the UFC. He was in my corner. He's been in Tampa for the last three weeks. We've been grinding together, and uh, I'll be in, I'll, I'll most likely either be in his corner or uh, I'm going to fly out for his Vegas fight, and uh, he's going to get the win, and we're just going to keep things going all the way to the top. Did uh, did he get word uh, that Roosevelt Roberts uh, called him out on, on live television right after? Did you yeah, hear guys uh, back? We were, uh, we were backstage. We think it's hilarious, man. Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt, it's the second time he called him out. It's funny, man. Uh, we wanted we want Roosevelt to get his name a little bigger. He got a big win tonight. Uh, I'm pretty sure, you know, I, I know Matt's going to get that win in a few weeks. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy for him. You know, they're going to hype that fight up a little bit. And uh, he's going to get, you know, Roosevelt better be careful. Uh, be careful what you wish for, man, because Matt's a tough, tough dude.